Welcome to Jammin' with Jason Mefford, a show where we discuss topics relevant to chief audit executives and professionals in audit, risk, and compliance. We discuss the technical and soft skills needed to navigate the minefields of organizations. You hear best practices and practical advice for helping you advance your career, and we'll even talk about music, mindfulness, and psychology, because we can. So sit back and relax while you listen to the number one podcast in the world for internal auditors, unscripted and unedited. Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, welcome back, my friends. And uh, this week, let's get into talking about what's holding most chief audit executives back. Now, from that title, um, let me just give you a little a little background here. Uh, in the internal audit profession, there are certain challenges and opportunities that face our profession. And what I've seen over the years in coaching many chief audit executives is there's some common problems and mistakes that people are making. And by making those mistakes, they're actually being held back in their career. So internal audit is not perceived well, sometimes in organizations, uh, the chief audit executive is not kind of seen as a trusted advisor from the other executives in the organization. And a lot of these things come back to the same problems or mistakes that I'm seeing over and over again. So that's why I want to talk to you about this today. Now, just to start off with, I just kind of want to level set a little bit and explain. So I use the term chief audit executive uh, quite a bit. And let me just explain what that means. It's a generic term that represents whoever is leading the internal audit department in an organization. So it's a generic term, chief audit executive. People's titles may be director of audit, VP of audit, senior VP of audit. Uh, there's, there's different titles that people may have, but really it's talking about whoever is leading the internal audit group, regardless of what their title is. So today's uh, podcast is gonna be more targeted towards chief audit executives. But if you're not a chief audit executive, listen anyway, because the information that I'm going to provide will also be very valuable for you in your career. Because again, these are not mistakes that just chief audit executives are making, but our profession in general of internal audit are making. So you're still going to get some val a lot of value actually out of listening today. Now, if you're not a CAE, like I said, go ahead and listen, but also please make sure and share this with your chief audit executive or others that you know that are chief audit executives, because I'm trying to get the message out there because I want to help elevate the status of internal audit in organizations and help people really move into executive presence and become a trusted advisor in their organizations. And what I'm gonna go through today is how you can do that. Now, if you are a chief audit executive, please listen, pay attention. Uh, and I also wanna throw out there again, I mean, this is kind of a time sensitive podcast um, because right now we are accepting new member applications for the chief audit executive forum. And so in that, in the forum, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more later, uh, this is a great opportunity for you if you really want to elevate internal audit in your organization and if you want to move into your executive presence and become that trusted advisor in your organization. It helps provide you with the support uh, to be able to help you get there uh, and we work more on that. But again, you know, based on the timing of when this podcast is coming out, those applications are due this week. So um, if this is something that, that sounds interesting to you, make sure and check out the page. There's a link in the show notes down below uh, where you can go to learn more and submit your application. 
but again, those applications have to be in uh, by the end of this week, by the end of January. So again, since that's time sensitive, I wanted to make sure and tell you that to begin with. Now, uh, I came across a quote from Helen Keller that I really uh, enjoy, and it says, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And you know, I really believe that. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing things like you know, this Jamming with Jason podcast, the Chief Audit Executive Briefing, the forum, all these different things, because I truly believe that together we can do so much more than we can individually. But what that means is we actually have to come together, okay? Now, let me start, you know, again, kind of getting into this, because like I said, this is going to be a little bit different of an episode. But my promise to you is, again, if you listen, we really can elevate the status of internal audit and our careers together. Okay, this is something that we can do together. If you try to do it by yourself, it's going to be really hard. Uh, and most of the time, you don't end up making it. So again, this is why I want to talk to you uh, about this today. Now, one of the things that, uh, you know, one of my <laughs> favorite quotes of all time is probably from Albert Einstein, you know, where he said, uh, insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. So let me say that again. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And like I said, some of these problems and mistakes that I see, people are making them over and over again, but they keep thinking, well, if I just do it again, if I just do it, if I just work harder, things are going to be different. But the truth is, things will only change if you change who you are being and what you are doing. And we're going to talk more about that later as we get into the material. So... Let me talk about, uh, first off, some of the, the big problems and mistakes that I'm seeing, and then we'll go through and talk about how you can actually overcome these. So, you know, if, if you've heard me for very long, you've, you've seen that I, I put out there a lot that most chief audit executives are not perceived as trusted advisors. We may like to believe that we are and that we're adding value, but most of the executives in our organization don't actually believe that. Okay. And, and the way you can see that is, again, many of us are fighting for budget and resources all the time. Well, if you're seen as a trusted advisor, not that there's not going to be questions, but you won't have to be fighting so hard for those resources. You know, if you think about some of the other executives in your organization, are they fighting as hard for budget as you are? Probably not, right? And, you know, if, if it were true that we were actually trusted advisors, People would be knocking on our door all the time asking for our help. And again, sometimes that happens, but most chief audit executives, that's not happening. People are not asking for their help. And again, it's because you're not being perceived as a trusted advisor. Now, often we end up focusing on wrong things. So what we think is important, uh, you know, kind of at an operational risk level, a lot of the executives don't really feel that's as important as what we do. And so again, we can go out, we can do a great, a great audit and you issue the report and everybody goes, eh, okay, whatever. Uh, because we're probably not focusing, we've got to elevate ourselves higher in thinking about really what the key objectives of the organization are and how we can really provide the most value uh, to our organization. Another one that I see over and over again is people thinking everyone else is the problem. So let me give you a little story on this because this is really what a lot of people refer to as victim mentality. So when you think everybody else is the problem and there's nothing wrong with you, that's victim mentality. And it usually goes bad when that happens, because here's the reality. Most of the time, the problem is with us and things that we need to change. We need to change how we're being and what we are doing. It's not everybody else's problem. Now, let me, let me share an example with you. 
I was speaking with a chief audit executive that was kind of going into detail. Uh, you know, this person had, um, had just been outsourced. So, you know, what, what happened is, uh, you know, the executives decided, hey, we don't need an in-house internal audit department anymore. Let's get rid of these people and we're going to outsource it to a professional service firm. Now, when that happens, usually they're not happy with what internal audit has been doing. And there can be a whole myriad of reasons. And again, I don't have all of the sides of this story. I just have what I heard from this chief audit executive. But as they were going through and kind of talking about it, it was always about somebody else. This executive's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They don't see my value. You know, when I try to bring up these things, they don't listen to me. And, and on and on and on. And the, and the picture that this person was really painting and actually used and said several times is that all of the executives in, in this organization are unethical and they just don't get it and they're unethical. And, and the, the problem is, you know, I, I want to do a big time out there because, you know, if really all of the executives in an organization are unethical and doing all of these bad things, then instead of you know, getting fired and kind of walking away quietly, we should actually be going to the regulators and saying, hey, the next Enron is right here. Now, I don't think that's what was happening here because again, those, those Enron, WorldCom, you know, pick, pick a name, those things happen but they happen so infrequently. It's a very small percentage of all organizations. So when I hear people complaining about it's the other people's fault, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry bullshit, okay, for most people because that's usually not the case. There's something this person was doing or not doing or how they were being that was getting that kind of reaction from the other executives. And again, you know, one of the problems that I see is thinking everyone else is the problem. Nope, most of the time we're the problem. Now, once we can actually admit that, now we can start getting help so that we can change those perspectives, okay? So those are some of the big problems that I see. Now, some of the mistakes that I see people making, because again, people know this, they, they see some of these things going on and so they're trying to fix it, okay? But, but here's what, I, what I'm seeing a lot of times when people are trying to fix it that are mistakes and they aren't actually working. First one, they're not seeing the big picture. You know, uh, change happens very slowly in organizations and sometimes we end up focusing on a very small aspect without thinking about the bigger picture. And we just end up going down this rabbit hole that ends up getting us fired or stressed out because we kind of grab on to one thing. And honestly, folks, sometimes we're a little self-righteous and we need to quit being that way and think about the bigger picture in our organization. You know, another mistake that I see people making is thinking they can do it alone. If I just work harder, if I, if I just do this, if I just do that, most of the time that doesn't work. The real power comes when you're able to be a part of a community and actually together, remember the Helen Keller quote, together we can do so much more. So if you think you can do it by yourself, good luck. If you'd like a little help, there's options for you that I'm going to go through and talk about. Because honestly, every single one of us needs a little help from our friends sometimes. Okay, I love that line from the Beatles song. Uh, I get by with a little help from my friends because that's true. Now, if you're, you know, bullheaded and stubborn and think I can do it by myself, again, good luck. It's probably not going to work. Because again, even in my life, when I've been stubborn, and thought, nope, I can just do this myself. I don't need anybody else's help. I usually go down in flames. The times that I actually reach out for help and get the support community that I need, that's when I actually 
am able to make a lot of progress. Another mistake that I'm seeing a lot of people making is they're looking for a quick fix. Now, there are plenty of people out on the internet that will be trying to preach to you that there's just some quick fix. If you change the way you, 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 re, you have the report format, right? So if you, if you change the format of your reports, now all of a sudden everybody's going to love what you do. Eh, probably not going to happen. Well, if you just start doing data analytics, then everything's going to be okay. Eh, it's probably not going to work, folks. Okay, those are both quick fixes. And what we're talking about here is something that takes years. There will not be a quick fix. There may be some quick wins, but you will not get to where you want to be for a while. Now, this happened to me both times I was chief audit executive. It happens, again, with all the successful CAEs that I talk to. You're on a three to five year journey. So don't look for quick fixes as a way to try to make things better. It's a long game. You have to be willing to put in the work, be the kind of person you need to be, and do the things you need to do over a long period of time. If you're just looking for the quick fix, my friends, it's just like you're shooting up heroin. And you'll feel good for a little while, but after a while you become a drug addict and you end up crashing and burning you know, as, as far as kind of a metaphor to, to think about this. You know, instead, if you want to feel better, instead of shooting heroin, you know, eat better, exercise, you know, do some mindful activities. But a lot of times people don't want to do those because they take time. But if you really want to get to where you want to be, it's going to take some time and you're going to have to put in the work. Just being honest with you, because like I said, there's a lot of people out on the internet, a lot of people in some of the different uh, firms that are trying to sell you things. And they're promising if you do this quick fix, if you hire them, if you do this, if you do that, then magically everything is going to change. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So let's go through it and, and talk a little bit more about maybe some of the things that you can do. Because really, there are three things that I think if you do, you will be able to help overcome some of these challenges. You won't be making the same mistakes and creating problems for yourself like often that we do. So here's what they are. The first one is we have to change how others perceive us. So if you're, if you're not driving or, or exercising, pull out a piece of paper and write these down and I'm going to go through and talk about it or go back and listen to this again. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to just tell you now because I might forget again later, but a longer version of this information is also included on that website that is in the show notes below. So you can go back and actually watch it. You'll see some slides and other stuff as well. It's in a video format. Um, so you can actually, you know, go over this information again. But the first one is we change how others perceive us, okay? The second thing is we actually need to develop our executive presence. And I'm using that term on purpose and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how we do that. Because again, if you're a chief audit executive, you want to be seen as an executive, which means we need to act like an executive and we need to have executive presence. And there's, there's a few things that you need to be doing to have that. In fact, there's three that we're gonna talk about later. Most people are not doing all three of them. Okay, so we need to move into that executive presence. Our third one is we need to have a collaborative community. Okay, and again, like I talked about before, if you think you can do it by yourself, <clears throat> probably not. Very few people are able to do this by themselves. They need a community around them. And the reason for that is we're, we're going to get into it more later, but the, the having that community helps you. Right now, for many of you, things may be going okay. And you think, I don't really need help. But at some point in the future, you know, the proverbial shit is going to hit the fan, 
okay? And I'm being a little bit more colorful this time because it's important and I, I want you to listen and I want you to get this, okay? At some point in the future, the shit is gonna hit the fan. And if you do not have that community around you, it is very, very difficult to deal with those things. Much better to be proactive, get a community around you that can help uh, in advance and actually start doing some of the work now while things are going well, because guess what? If you're proactive and you're doing those things, the proverbial shit hopefully will never hit the fan, okay? So those are the three things that I wanna go through and, and, and talk again a little bit about now. How to change uh, how others perceive us, developing our executive presence, and having this collaborative community. Okay, so again, as I said, most chief audit executives are not perceived as trusted advisors by executive management. And here's the reason. Let me, let me go through and just kind of uh, talk to you a little bit about this. And again, like I said, go to the... Uh, go out to the website and look at the video because there will actually be some visuals in that that will help you uh, to, really, to really get this concept. <clears throat> but here's what, what usually happens, okay? There are some different ways that you can be perceived in your organization. And I'm just going to talk about them briefly and see if this resonates with you, Okay. The first one is sometimes we're just tolerated by everybody else, okay? So what does tolerated mean? Well, they know they have to have you around because you know maybe you're publicly traded and they know we have to have internal audit. They tolerate you. Maybe they actually kind of like you, but they just tolerate your presence, okay? So do any of you ever feel like you're just tolerated by others? So that's one of the ways that we're kind of perceived. You know, another way that we end up getting perceived is, and, and this is kind of more internally for us, but we just feel frustrated, right? Is it's like, you know, people just don't get it. And, and we know what needs to be done, but we just can't seem to get it done. And so we feel frustrated. You know, do any of you feel frustrated? Another way, you know, that we're often viewed is we're just ignored right? You, 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 you are in the organization. Nobody really acknowledges that you're there. You're just kind of off to the side. You're a necessary evil that we have to have, but nobody gives you the time of day. Heck, a lot of people may not even realize you have internal audit in your organization, right? At, at the executive level. So let me ask you too, do you sometimes feel ignored? So could you feel tolerated, frustrated, or ignored? Most CAEs feel one of those things. Now, the only way to get out of that is there's some things that we have to do. And it's around technical and soft skills, okay? If you only have technical skills, but you don't have the soft skills, you're never going to be perceived as a trusted advisor because you're not able to communicate the way that you need to, you're not able to influence people. And as a result of that, like I said, you're going to either be tolerated, ignored, or frustrated. Okay, now that's, that's kind of the first one. Now let's, let's jump in next and talk about executive presence. And again, this is just because you have a fancy title doesn't mean you're being or doing what an executive would do. Because there's really kind of three areas that you need to be focusing on. And so I want you to think about this. Imagine somebody juggling balls. Now, if you're only juggling one ball, it's pretty easy. You just throw it up and down in the air. If you're juggling two balls, it's, it gets more difficult, but it's not that, that hard to do. You can kind of balance and juggle two balls okay. Where it really comes in is when you start trying to juggle three balls, then it becomes a little bit harder. And as I said at the beginning, you know, a lot of you are probably, you know, focusing maybe on one area, maybe two areas, but you're not doing all three very well. 
And this is one of the reasons, you know, of what we have to do to move into this executive presence. So what are these three different areas? Well, the first one is around stakeholders. And so what we have to do is be able to actually manage the relationships with our stakeholders. If you are an executive, that is one of the biggest parts of your job is actually developing the relationships with other parts of the organization and managing those stakeholder relations. So again, an internal audit, again, depending on your company, there's lots of different ones. The obvious ones, the board, executive management, could be regulators, your external auditors, uh, you know, your staff, other people like that are all really kind of stakeholders. And you have to be able to manage all of those stakeholder relationships. Now, some of the things, you know, that most of the time, uh, you know, a lot of the other executives may look at us like we're little kids, you know, and, and I know that can be difficult, but this is where, again, as we learn how to manage these stakeholder relationships, we start to evolve from that point. And the reality is there's, it's like a, like a minefield in organizations often, you know, that you have to be careful and understand really how to navigate the executive politics in organizations. If you don't understand it, it's just like you're stepping on landmines. And eventually, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna step on a landmine. And that landmine may be the equivalent of a career limiting move. We used to talk about these <laughs> in public accounting when I was there. That was a CLM move, a career limiting move. Well, I don't want you to make career limiting moves. And so, you know, again, you need to learn how to manage those stakeholder relationships. Because the reality is, if you don't have the respect and trust of executive management, it's either because of what you're doing or how you are being. And so again, there's ways that you can learn, there's things that you can do to change that. And one of the biggest ways is to not let some of the theoretical stuff in our profession get in the way. So for example, don't let theoretical independence get in the way of doing what is necessary and practical. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, I can't do what the executives want me to do because that would impair my independence. You know, stop, stop thinking that way. Because the reality is your organization pays your paycheck. You know, last time I checked, no CAE was getting paid by the Institute of Internal Auditors. While the standards are important, we want to follow those. You have to do what's necessary and practical for you, your team, and your organization. So don't get self-righteous in, in letting things like independence get in the way of doing what needs to be done. Now, another quick point on this. Um, <laughs> Winston Churchill, I just watched a, a movie about him, and, and one of the quotes that he said was, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. Now, one of the reasons why you're not, you may not be doing well with your stakeholders is to them, it feels like we're always throwing rocks at them. We come back, there's always improvements that need to be done. We tend to be more negative. And the problem is, you know, other people view us like somebody throwing rocks at them. Well, I don't know if you're like me, but I don't want to be around anybody who's throwing rocks at me. I want to stay far enough away from them. So if that's a perception that you're having, there's some things that need to change. Okay, the second area that we need to really deal with in this executive presence is our staff. And you know, I know, I know a lot of times this is a very difficult part of the job. You have to deal with HR issues when you are a chief audit executive. You have to find the right people. You have to do what you need to to keep the right people, right? There's sometimes, you know, you have to discipline, uh, you know, and think about, well, how am I gonna structure? How am I gonna staff all of these different projects, right? But here's another big one too is that as you move into a chief audit executive role, 
you move from being a manager to a leader. And often that is difficult for people to make that transition. You know, a leader is more controlling and, and direct supervising, telling people what to do. And, and this is where that term micromanaging comes in, that a lot of times as we move into the leadership position, we continue to manage people and often micromanage people instead of really stepping into the role of a leader because there is a difference between being a leader and being a manager. So again, that may be something that you need to work on as well. Now, the third area of executive presence, and this is one that a lot of people forget, but it is managing yourself, okay? Um, and sometimes this can be the hardest thing to do, but it is the most important thing to do. So, you know, <laughs> I'm a fan of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure as well. And so in there, you know, they, they talk about all these famous dead dudes. Well, here's a couple of famous dead dudes that talked about this. Leo Tzu, right? Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. And so when we can really master ourself, that goes a long way in our executive presence. And it's not easy to do. Mastering yourself may be one of the hardest things you ever do. And that's why we need help. We need help in learning how to do that, how to develop the right habits so that we can actually have that confidence, have the integrity of actually managing ourself. You know, Plato also said, the first and best victory is to conquer self. And I know this is true, and this is actually one of the areas that will have one of the biggest impacts on those other aspects of um, your executive presence. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about this. You know, when you're managing self, most people work from what's called the have, do, be model. And so it kind of goes like this. When I have the time, when I have the money, then I can do that, and then I will become or be that person. And that's what most people operate from. This is why people don't take action, because they think, oh, well, that would be great, but I don't have the money for that. And so they never actually get started. They never become the person that they need to be, okay? Instead, you have to flip that model around. You have to be, do, and then you will have, which means sometimes when it's a little scary, you actually have to take action. So again, instead of saying, I don't have time, I don't have money for that, we need to switch that around and be the kind of person who will take the time and take the money to invest in ourselves. Okay, so again, if you're an Olympic athlete, if, if you say, well, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money to hire a coach and a trainer to be able to help me become an Olympic athlete, guess what? You're never going to be an Olympic athlete. If instead you start acting like an Olympic athlete, you figure out ways to take the time and to find the money to get the coaching that you need, then you will really have at the end of the day you know, a gold medal hanging around your neck, but you will never get that gold medal hanging around your neck if you don't have the courage to take the time and money to begin with and start doing the work necessary to be able to have that gold medal. So the same thing applies to us. If you want to be that confident executive, you have to be willing to invest the time and money and do the work so that you are actually will have the respect of people uh, when you are that kind of an executive. Okay, so the last of the three areas that I wanted to kind of talk to you today is again about the collaborative community. And as I told you, you know, to begin with, uh, this is very important. And I know, you know, a lot of us think, well, I'm independent, I should be able to do it by myself. Reality is, folks, it just doesn't work that way, okay? So, so think about if, if any of you have, uh, you know, since, again, we're, we're close to the beginning of the year. 
a lot of you may have said, you know what, I'm going to start going for a walk or running or exercising, doing something like that. Now, if you decide and you are doing that by yourself, what ends up happening is we usually run out of steam. So the first week or two, we do great. But then, you know, maybe it's raining outside. And so we think, oh, you know, I don't really want to get up. It's raining. I don't really want to go outside. And so because it's just a commitment that you've made to yourself and you're not a part of a community, you just let it go. And then all of a sudden, a week or two goes by and you realize you haven't been doing what you said you were going to do. Now, flip that around. If instead, at the beginning of the year, you said, you know what, I'm going to start exercising more. And, and my buddy, you know, Frank or Bob or Joe or Sue, whatever their name is, hey, let's go for a walk every day at 630 in the morning. When you create that group, it builds in some accountability for you. So again, you do well the first two weeks, and then you're laying in bed going, oh man, it's raining outside. I really don't want to go outside. Oh, but Bob's going to be waiting for me. It will help you get your butt out of bed to go meet Bob because you've made a commitment to Bob. That is one of the examples of why having a community around you is helpful. It gives you some accountability and it helps you keep going. Another reason for having a community around you is again, as I said before, right now things may be going well, but in the future they may not be going so well. And if you don't have a community that you can reach out to and ask for help, when the, when the trouble comes, you're gonna be dealing with the trouble by yourself, as opposed to having already developed those relationships with people and so you can actually get best practices, ask questions, see what others have gone through. Because here's, here's what I've found, is somebody else has already gone through whatever problem I may be facing at the time, okay? Somebody else has already gone through that. Now, I can either learn the hard way by trying to figure it out myself, or I can learn from others and make it much easier. I prefer to learn from others and make it easier. And I hope you do too, because it really does make all the difference. You know, as an example, I was, I was talking with a, with a chief audit executive. This person has, has been in the industry for a long time, 30 plus years. Uh, but there were some things going on at this person's organization, things that they had never dealt with before, okay? And I remember as I was talking to them, they even made that comment. They said, you know, in 30 years of all my training of working for some of the biggest companies in the world, I have never come across this. And you know what? That's what happens is that at some point in your career, you're going to come across something that you have never experienced before. But here's the good thing. Somebody else probably has or somebody else from an outside perspective can give you some guidance or coaching to help you get through it. And so again, this is why community is so important, but you have to develop it before you end up having the problems usually. Now, I kind of blabbered and gone on for a little while, but is this resonating with you? You know, are you understanding, are you seeing how doing some of these things can actually help you to elevate the status of internal audit and to be able to move your career forward. You know, we need to change how others are perceiving us. We need to develop our executive presence and we need to become a part of a collaborative community. Now, the good thing is, again, if you are a chief audit executive, there's help out there, okay? This is exactly what the Chief Audit Executive Forum does. It is a group of like-minded Chief Audit Executives where you can share best practices, ask questions, get advice, get that sense of community. So that again, as a group, just like Helen Keller said, you know, at the beginning that, you know, together we can do so much more. That's the idea behind the Chief Audit Executive Forum. 
You know, it's, it's an opportunity to come together each month as a group, have group calls where we can talk about different things. You know, there's kind of an educational side of it as well. Um, but really, you're able to get thought leadership and best practice, best practices from your peers. You know, and really, it is an, an exclusive executive community where you do learn, hey, what have others done to help change the perceptive, the perception of internal audit in their organization? Will this work for me? You know, how do I, you know, develop my executive presence? Oh, here's some ways that I can do it. Here's some other people that I can look to as an example that I can learn from and can move into that role. And like I said, again, it's that collaborative community. Okay, now I want you to I want you to think about this because I know sometimes, especially in our profession, we're very risk averse. We don't like change. But here's the here, here's the thing, folks. Like I talked about before, remember the Albert Einstein quote? If you keep trying to do things the same way, you're going to get the same results. If you want things to be different, you have to start taking different action. One of those actions that you can take now is to apply to join the Chief Audit Executive Forum. Now, the forum is different. It's not anybody who wants to get in gets to get in. You actually have to go through an application process. You have to go through an interview to be able to be offered membership in the Chief Audit Executive Forum. Go out to the web page, look through the information, and there's actually a link there where you can submit your application. This is different than anything else out there. And because of that, it's a different process for joining as well. You have to go through an interview, you have to fill out an application, and the reason for that is to make sure that it's a safe uh, space and that the right people are included in there so that you really can have those frank discussions and know that whatever's said is kept within the group. It's confidential. And, and, and again, it's like I said, it's, it's these like-minded CAEs who were all trying to elevate the status of internal audit in our organizations and really move into that executive presence and become a trusted advisor in our organizations. So again, if that's something that sounds like what you want, make sure and submit your application. Now, applications are only open until the end of January because we only open applications a few times a year. And so this is your opportunity to get in to that kind of a group and start working on those three areas that we talked about. Now, just to wrap up, you know, again, as you've listened through this, there's probably, you fall into one of three groups. One of, you know, one group is, wow, I'm ready to get started right now. This is exactly what I need. Well, if it's exactly what you need, go click on the link, go fill out your application, get it in today so we can set up the interview with you. Just take action now. If you're, if you're one of those people that are saying, well, I don't really think it's for me. Okay. Right. It, this is not for everyone. And in fact, we turn away people each time that are not a good fit. So if you don't think it's a good fit, don't waste your time filling out an application, okay? But at some point in the future, you may realize that you need this. And so we're gonna be here. When you get to that point and you feel like this is something that you need, reach out and let me know. And the next time that we open up membership, we'll let you put in your application and see if you're a good fit, okay? Now, the third group, which some of you may be in as well, you're sitting there and thinking, well, I don't know, I need to think it over. I need to talk to somebody, okay? Well, okay, if you need to do that, again, go out to the page. If you need to talk about it a little bit, schedule a time to talk to me. But here's the thing, don't think too much because the problem is we tend to, again, in our profession, we like to overthink and overanalyze things and if you overthink and overanalyze, you usually miss out. And so what ends up happening is there's still plenty of time until the end of the week for you to go ahead and submit your application. 
But if you, if you overthink it, you'll end up sitting on your hands and not make a decision. And I don't want you to regret making the decision if three months from now you end up having that proverbial shit hit the fan. Okay. So don't think too much about it. Remember to be, have, and do. Find a way to make the time, find a way to, to get the money and apply for the CAE forum. Because here's the thing, I want you to imagine if, you know, in, in maybe as little as three weeks after you join the forum, all of a sudden, you know, you start to realize and get clarity about what you can do differently that will start to make an impact in your organization. How are you going to feel after three weeks when it's like, you know, all that stress, all that frustration that I was feeling before starts to get lifted because now you're realizing, hold it, I can do this and here's how I can do it. It's going to feel great. What if three months from, from now, you all of a sudden start getting asked for your advice? Other people start viewing you differently in the organization. Maybe three months from now, you're actually invited to the executive table. How is that going to feel? It's going to feel great. You know, what if three years from now, internal audit really is viewed as an equal to others in the organization? If people look at you and realize that you are a very, very valuable part of this organization, if people are viewing you as a trusted advisor, if they're coming to you regularly for help, that, my friends, is a great feeling. So I want you to imagine and think about how good that is going to feel and then have the courage to take the action now because how grateful are you going to be three weeks, three months, three years from now that you actually had the courage to do what you needed to do to get the help, to get a part, become a part of the CAE forum and be able to have all of those things that you want. You're going to feel really grateful and it's going to be really, really great. You just have to take action now. So with that, my friends, I'm going to wrap up. Again, as a reminder, applications are due by the end of January for the Chief Audit Executive Forum. So click on the link below, go out to the website, look at the information, and make sure and submit your application and schedule your interview. And I look forward for those of you that want to get into this group of like-minded chief audit executives, I look forward to getting your applications and being able to talk with you. And for the rest of you, have a great rest of your week, and I will catch you on the next episode of Jammin' with Jason. See ya. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Jamming with Jason. Keep on rocking in the audit world. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you later on the next show. If you'd like to earn continuing professional education for listening to today's episode, head on over to C-Risk Academy at ondemand.criskacademy.com. And that's C as in the letter C, riskacademy.com. Not only do you get a CPE certificate, but you also will have access to the video version of today's show. The views and opinions expressed on this show are that of the individuals and not of their respective organizations.